When I first learned about evolution in high school, uh, Mrs. Goldberg, I was in high school, I remember, it was all in the context of the framework within which Darwin and Wallace really wrote their initial ideas down, which is understanding the great wealth of species on planet Earth. And in that setting, we all know what they told us, right? In the descent from parent to progeny, there's descent with modification. And those modifications are such that some of the progeny are worse at surviving, and those are the ones that will be less likely to reproduce. Some are better at surviving. They're the ones that are more likely to reproduce and therefore spread that particular mutation widely through the genetic pool. Now, of course, that version of evolution assumes that life already exists. The question is, does evolution give us any insight, perhaps, into how life itself may have first gotten started? And there are versions of natural selection and evolution which have been developed over the decades, which do go further back. There is a version called molecular Darwinism. And molecular Darwinism is a kind of evolution of the universe in which you're starting with atoms, and particles, and you recognize that once those atoms learn a very specific trick, once they learn how to replicate, make copies of themselves, that's not all that hard. If you have a bunch of atoms that are stuck together in a configuration and they're very good at drawing in the very same ingredients out of which they are made, they can form the template that copies that atomic configuration, that molecular configuration, yielding copies of itself. So once a collection of molecules learns how to replicate, then you're in an interesting situation. Because if mutations, if some copy is not identical to the original, and if that copy is even better able to make copies of itself, it will draw in more of the raw material in the environment and dominate the molecular demographics. And if in that replication process you get another mutation that's even better at replicating, it will then take over. And indeed, you can have molecules coming together in even more complicated structures, and in that way, making copies and holding on to information that allows them to not only make copies, but direct the creation of copies. And so this idea, kind of chemical combat, that is a molecular version of Darwinian natural selection, may be how we go from a bath of particles to collections that are ever more ordered, ever more complicated, ultimately taking us to the molecules necessary for life.